Welcome to Ridgecrest Talk. I'm your host, Tanya Pyle, and my guest today is Bart Parker from Randsburg, or he's curator at the Randsburg Museum. And I uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I wanted to uh, hear about early law enforcement. And so um, before we get into early law enforcement in Randsburg, you said actually Randsburg is part of sort of a triage of, uh, of uh, yeah, there's, community. There's three towns up there. Randsburg, Johannesburg, and Red Mountain. And Randsburg was the gold town, the gold mining town, the original town. Johannesburg was the railroad town. Okay. And uh, Red Mountain was the silver mining town. Mm -hmm. There used to be four towns up there. There was Atolia. Mm. Atolia is a complete ghost town now. It was the tungsten mining area. Okay. And they're all within five miles circle. Uh, and they can just compromise the Rand Mining District. Okay. Well, now, Johannesburg has a population of about what? Uh, close to 300. 300. And uh, you said the children there come to school here in Ridgecrest? Uh, after the third grade, yes. After third grade. Oh, so they go to... Third, they, up they, to third they have grade. a school in Johannesburg. Okay, that, for up to third grade. That serves the three towns. All right. Up to third grade, through the third grade. Uh huh. Yeah, but uh, Randsburg then is what is referred to as a living ghost town. Yes. All right. But it was rather booming from the late 1890s. 18, well, 97, 98. Gold was discovered in 1895 there in April mm -hmm. of 1895. By early 1896, the town started developing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it boomed. The boom period, the biggest period, probably was 1897 when it reached its peak okay. in population, which was about 2,500, mm -hmm. which at that time was the second largest town in Kern County. Mm -hmm. In Kern County, I learned sort of formed about the 1860s, the mid 1860s. So it had about a 30-year jump on Randsburg, the Randsburg yeah. community. And then when did that sort of die off in, in terms of it becoming fewer and fewer in, in well, Randsburg? Well, uh, the town remained the, basically the center of uh, commerce out here in the desert until Ridgecrest developed in 1945 when the base came. And then things started dying and, down in Ridgecrest. And uh, you, that's mm -hmm. when you said you came to, well, we, we say came to Ridgecrest, but now Ridgecrest didn't become yeah. a town until, or a community, or a city, or incorporated, it I should yeah. say, would be the term to use, until 19, what, 63? 63. And, yeah. uh, but you've been here since you first came in yeah, 45. Uh, I came in, uh, in August of 45. I wasn't quite three years old. Uh -huh. And uh, I lived on the base. And I lived there before they paved the streets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you've seen a lot of incredible changes. Yes, of I Growing have. up and, uh, and now you're in Johannesburg. Right. And curator of the Randsburg Museum. Yes. And so I'm sitting here with an excerpt from, is this from your history book that you wrote, or mm, yeah. are these? Partially, yes. Partially, okay. So part of these are, are notes that you have provided, been so kind to provide me, but part from your, your history book. What's the name of the history book you uh, wrote? Bakeries, Bordellos, and Bars. Oh, the, okay. The history of Ransburg is told through its trade tokens. Uh-huh, right. Tags. Okay. So well, we're going to focus in on... Um, the early law enforcement, but um, now, okay, so let's just take a look at some of these characters here. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can uh, see this because I've got my contacts in <laughs> and I don't need to look that far away. But uh, we had saloons, people who owned both a saloon and deputy sheriff 
that was John Crawford. John and so John. today our focus is going to be on John Crawford, Claude Bohannon, who owned a second saloon, the Capitol Saloon, and was also town constable. Then there was E.B. McGinnis, who was appointed Justice of the Peace. Now some communities, Justice of the Peace is the same as a constable. Yeah, but, but in yeah. this case, he was a, a yeah. lawman. What did he do, mind the jail? <laughs> no, uh, John, John Crawford uh, was, was the lawman. Okay, he and was the lawman. He ran a saloon, but he also had an interest in the St. Elmo mine out of day, a place called St. Elmo, which is just outside the Rand Mining District. Mm -hmm. But we usually include it in there because it's... It was the only town nearby. They had to come to Randsburg for supplies. So. And what was that town? Saint Elmo. Saint. Oh, it was a town. Yeah. And they had well, a saloon. It, he had the really. saloon there. Not really. It was just they. It was a stop on the railroad for water. Okay. And such, but uh, it was uh, there wasn't anything there but the mine until. 1920s, and then there was a gas station there. Okay, so when we have these three characters, we're talking about 1896. Right. John Crawford, Claude Bohannon, and E.B. McGinnis. We're going to talk more about these three, but uh, as I read through this, I mean, we're literally talking a camp of people. I mean, they, they had tents, they set up tents, and they apparently caught wind of uh, precious metals in the area, yeah. and a group of them came out, yeah. men, women, and uh, maybe there were no children at this time, mm -hmm. but maybe there were. But they w set up camp. And camp so when we come back from our break, I'm going to ask you to tell us um, how this tent camp became a town and uh, who got to rule the roost in Ransburg. <laughs> so thank right. you and uh, we'll be right back after this message and, uh, for more on Ransburg. Welcome back to Ridgecrest Talk with uh, Bart Parker. And we're talking about early law enforcement. And so I've got the, the expert and, uh, excerpt from your book and notes. So uh, we're looking at the characters there. I have uh, John Crawford, who owned the EB, or the St. Elmo Saloon, and was deputy sheriff of Kern County at the time. Also, there was Claude Bohannon, who owned the Capitol Saloon, an appointed town constable. And at the same time, there was E.B. McGinnis, who had been appointed Justice of the Peace. And so at this time, the Camp of People, then uh, they decided they, they thought they needed some help with these three characters, I guess. <laughs> So, well, I'm so, not sure it was the three characters they needed help with, but the other characters that these three were trying to control. Okay, so <laughs> they, all right, so, so then uh, in any case, the town people formed a committee yeah. called the Vigilante Committee. Well, they, they, they called it the Citizens Committee, mm -hmm. but in essence it was a vigilante okay. type committee. They, all right, they, Committee they, of Arbitration was the yeah. term. Well, that's an interesting term they decided to use, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Wonder how that was arbitrated. At the do end know, of the Do you know how many people that we're talking about at this camp? If, if this period would have been around 2,000. Around, whoa, that's a pretty large camp. Yeah, well, they, grow, they grow in a hurry when they're finding gold. I guess, I guess. So... Uh, they came from, uh, what was the, do you know what the majority, where the majority of people came? It was an interesting mixture, actually. Uh, a lot of them came from Bakersfield, San Bernardino, uh, Los Angeles, 
but there were a lot of uh, immigrants, too, that had been here in the States for a number of years. Well, who but, made up Bakersfield in the early, or in the late 1890s? Who was that? Who was that? They were, well, it was a farming and railroad community. Okay, okay. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, where there's money, people are going to, going to go Flock. after it. <laughs> right, right. And they came here, and you said they were mining three different metals, and they were... Yeah, over, over the period of, of the history of the camp, they mined gold, silver, and tungsten. Mm -hmm. Gold was discovered in 1895. The Yellow Aster was the largest gold mine in Southern California. Tungsten, which was discovered in 1903, boomed during World War I, 1916 to 18 period, and it was the largest tungsten mine in the United States at the time. Silver was discovered in 1919 in Red Mountain, and it was the largest silver mine in California. So uh, it's uh, noteworthy to say they made up to Twenty-five million is that right, or what? What was the they, dollar they amount? They made twenty. They mined twenty-two million dollars of gold that was reported when gold was eighteen dollars an ounce. Uh, they mined about the same amount of silver when it was a dollar an ounce, and tungsten they mined in the same amount of twenty, around twenty million when it was $20 per unit, and a unit was about 20 pounds, so it was a dollar a pound. Mm. So, um, so it, the people uh, who, who flocked here, 2,000 people, and, uh, and they were in tents, yeah. and so it was really a hard life. Well, they, they started putting up permanent buildings in about early 1896. Okay. Uh, what do you call the, the wood shacks, permanent mm -hmm. buildings. Mm -hmm. Some of them still exist, so mm -hmm. they are permanent, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there were what they called hotels and uh, uh, boarding houses, you know, in, during 1896. And uh, you had mentioned saloons earlier. In 1897, there was 21 saloons in town. So Boy, it was a it was sure, a booming town. Sure. A town's wealth was always indicated by the number of saloons that were in town. So with the saloons, you're going to have some problems, some brawling oh, yeah. and uh, some fists flying uh, and. Uh, Guns firing. Yeah, Randsburg was no different than any other early was, mining camp. It, it was, was the Wild West. Yeah. It was the Wild West. So, uh, so do you have some stories to share with us as to uh, now a, a sheriff? This was a Kern County sheriff, but then you had the the other two appointed. Uh, any stories to share with us on? Uh, you mentioned somehow one of them was affiliated with Wyatt Earp. Well, uh, Colonel Hafford, who uh, was on the Citizens Committee, okay, owned the uh, Corner Saloon in Tombstone, Arizona, uh, which was the place at which Wyatt Earp and his brothers and Doc Holliday all gathered before they went to the gunfight at the OK Corral. And Colonel Hafford was called to testify at the inquest on the shooting at the OK Corral. Mm. So uh, they they sort of spread themselves around from uh, Randsburg. Well, they they followed they followed the strikes. So, you know, where, where okay. the when the a new strike was made and money was flowing good, that's where they went. And mm -hmm. when things sort of settled down and uh, became a little more competitive, they moved on to the next strike. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the the saloon owners and such, just like the miners, were following where the money was at the time. And you mentioned they they had their own sort of uh, John Wayne 
sort of uh, oh, character. Yeah. Uh, now, I don't, was he getting in trouble with uh, with some of the other men's wives, or what was it? No, that was John Arnold. Oh, that was John Arnold. The, the one I, I referred to as Ransburg's own John Wayne was John Kelly. Oh, John Kelly. Yeah. Okay, John, well, when we John Kelly is, was... Uh, he was the John Wayne. Yeah. Well, hold that thought when we get back from our, our next uh, brief break. And we're going to hear more about John Kelly okay. and our own uh, John Wayne. Thank you. All right, we're back with Ridgecrest Talk and my guest Bart Parker talking to us today about early law enforcement in Randsburg and the connection with uh, Wyatt Earp, the, the gentleman Hanson who had a saloon in Arizona, yeah. which was a, a very sort of famous spot with, near the OK Corral and that group of Westerners we've, a lot of us have heard of <laughs> from our uh, childhood uh, Wild West stories and uh, t television but um, now we were talking about John Kelly who who followed being appointed constable after after um, after Mr. Bohannon. Bohannon so then we have John Kelly and what was going on and he also well he served several offices constable yeah. and supervisor he he started off as uh, constable in Garlock Okay. Uh, which is about eight miles from Randsburg. And then in 1899, he became constable of, of uh, Randsburg. Uh, not too long after, 1900 or so, he became, he was elected to be the county supervisor from uh, the Randsburg district. And then in around 1902, he became the county sheriff an election. He was elected to be county sheriff. Uh, oh, and he later, uh, after his law career and career in public administration, so to speak, mm -hmm. he went back to mining and he, he was one of the discoverers of the big silver mine in Red Mountain. Okay. So he was uh, referred to as the Kelly Mine. Uh, okay. Well, it's kind of interesting because it actually doesn't sound all that different than today. I mean, it, it, it was a county area at the time. It was part of the already established Kern County. And it became populated very quickly because of the strikes, as you called it. Strikes mean two different things. Not, not like a union strike, but no. striking gold right. is how they, gold. they t termed it. <laughs> and so... But it was a sheriff, and it was a lawman, and a justice of, a, of the peace then, is what we have. Well, that's what we started with, and then we got a citizens committee. And then we got the citizens yeah. committee. All right. And then we got John Kelly came along as the constable, and I refer to him as, as Ransburg's John Wayne because he was known for preferring not to carry a gun. And there was one incident where he was called because John, uh, Jim McKinney, uh, who was a notorious outlaw oh, and okay. uh, whatnot from Kern County, was raising the devil in Ransburg, and they called the constable, John Kelly, and he faced Jim McKinney down without a gun. And uh, although there was about 50 guys standing around with rifles and whatnot ready to go after him, John Kelly told him, no, you just stay here and I'll go handle it so that the, there's no unnecessary bloodshed. And he walked down into this gulch and around the corner and run right into McKinney and his buddy and they stuck their guns into his chest and he just stayed calm and said, I'm here to enforce the law. And if you uh, don't come along with me, there will be law to follow to do it. So you might as well come now. And he reached out and asked them for their guns. They turned their guns over and 
That's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing uh, to, story. To, to have that kind of nerve. Mm -hmm. Cour that's else. courage. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually courage. And, uh, anyway, as I said, he, he, he did well as a lawman. Mm -hmm. And then later, in, in about 1904, if I, my memory serves me right, uh, there was a showdown in Bakersfield while he was uh, sheriff, mm -hmm. and Jim McKinney was killed in a gunfight over there, oh. where one of the deputies was also killed and another one injured. Uh, but uh, Kelly did never get shot. No. Well, that's pretty amazing. I thought he died young, though. He did. He died. Uh, I forget what age, but he died as a result of. He was coming from Los Angeles to Randsburg and uh, his chauffeur, they had a flat tire, the chauffeur got out to to uh, change the tire. Mm -hmm. And John got out of the car and walked around the car. Oh, they had see, a car at this time. Yeah, to see what the, 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 sh the sh chauffeur was doing. And a truck came down the highway and killed him. Oh. Didn't even kill him. Huh? It's amazing, someone with so much courage and that then was, they uh, get hit. was uh, in the later 20s, 1920s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they've still got a lot of mines around uh, Randsburg, and uh, you said that mostly now it's hobbyists. Yeah, week weekend miners are Who? out there. Uh, now, how is the town set up now? It's, it's, a, it's a living ghost town. Is there a mayor? Is there a... No. No. The only elected officials up there are the water board. Okay. You have the water uh, board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's part of the county, so it's the sheriffs. And yeah. it's been the we, sheriffs since yeah, most we, of the we, time. Most of the history has yeah. been a, a county sheriff then. Right. A constable, a lawman. We had a constable in, in uh, Randsburg until uh, right after Ridgecrest was formed. In the early 60s. I see. Uh, and then uh, he came down here to, to be constable of both, and uh, oh. then they gave up on it. And just we we rely on the uh, Ridgecrest substation of the sheriff's office mm -hmm. for law enforcement. Mm -hmm. But if that's the county, and then uh, Ridgecrest has the city police. Yeah. But, and, but you're in the county. Area yeah, of we, yeah, we rely on the sheriff. Uh huh. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us and telling us about the early law enforcement and sort of giving us a picture of how things started in Randsburg and how that uh, striking these precious metals really created a boom in the town. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. You're welcome. We look forward to hearing more about Ransburg. Uh, I'd be glad to come back and tell you more. Mm -hmm.